All right, man, we're live. Welcome. Boom. Yeah. I'm excited. Dude, tell me what you do. <laughs> I saw like testosterone stuff okay. on your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, ba- basically, um, yeah, I mean, I can tell you the background story in a, in a nutshell. I, obviously, if you want more detail, I can go into it. But essentially, I had, I had some health problems as I was basically pursuing being like a fitness model. And from the suffering, I basically went on a crazy journey, which led me to... I was just doing things very normally like other people, right? Just, I was looking yeah. at even Joe Rogan, speaking about the podcast and stuff, looking at like Joe Rogan, how did he, how does he do stuff? Ended up taking like a lot of supplements like people do. And I never really found a way that was like worked for me. And from the suffering, uh, you go on the hero's journey and uh, started to look online a lot, seeing what people were doing, started to do a lot of research. And I started to, um, yeah, try and fix my own, my own digestion problems, my own problems with low testosterone. And yeah. Uh, yeah, from there, I basically went on like a three-year all-in health journey. I quit my job. I was working in London. And uh, yeah, from there, I basically fixed my own health problems, started to share how I did that online, started to go, went to go live on a farm in uh, Denmark, like kind of Amish-style farming. And uh, yeah, I started to basically fix my friends' problems. Then other people start to inquire online as to like, hey, how do you do this? And then to answer the question concretely, basically... Um, yeah, I, I have a program specifically for fixing guys who have specific health problems, guys who are kind of looking for a more natural way of taking care of their health, basically, and kind of people that don't resonate so much with like taking 25 different supplement pills every day or people that have like some digestion problems or testosterone problems, stuff like this. Okay. So where are you from? You, it's a South African accent I hear, right? Or- no, no, no. I'm, I'm English. I think I've, I've been oh, here right. like two weeks and uh, I've been hanging out with Pete a lot, Pete yeah. Foden. And so I think he started to like infect my accent a bit, but I'm English. I'm, okay. from, I'm from the UK. And then you went to Denmark and worked on a farm. And yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I, but I'm, I'm also Spanish, half Spanish. Right. And I lived in Brazil for like three years in total. So I'm, I'm like, okay. I'm like 25% Brazilian at least. Okay. <laughs> Shit. So you've been traveling for long or are you based in England? At the no, moment? no. What's so like, what's your, what's your, how does your base and everything like, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. Your story? So I, I live in Dubai. Now yeah. and I lived in I've lived in Dubai for like six months and then prior to that I was living in Spain I was, I lived on a farm in Denmark for like yeah and then I also lived in Sweden farming also for like uh, one and a half years so been a, all over the place now I'm settled into Dubai okay cool so this testosterone stuff I assume you had quite low testosterone and then yep. you obviously used yourself as kind of like a lab rat and kind of figured it out and then started helping other people right where what was your baseline or starting point do you know the numbers and then mm-hmm. what did you do to actually increase it and then what did we get to yeah yeah so 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 I I didn't do the blood test for a long time but I had all the symptoms like extreme extreme fatigue no uh, no no libido. Uh, very tired all the time, and uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even do the blood test because it's quite hard to do a blood test in the UK. It's not like, uh, well, I, I was also a brokey at the time, so I yeah, was like, yeah, I was, yeah. I didn't, paying wasn't an option. Like hundred pounds for a test, like I can't do that. So uh, yeah, I didn't do the test for like I don't know, like a year and a half. And even when I, and then I still wasn't fixing my problems. It took me a long time, and, and the level was like four hundred or something like that. Okay, so uh, but that's uh, not bad, hey. That, like, four hundred in the middle terrible. of the reference range. Was no, no, no. Like typically one eighty to like eight hundred or something, isn't it? Or? No, no. Yeah, but the, the thing with the reference ranges is that, well, you can you can kind of put a conspiracy on it or not, but regardless, yeah. the fact is like they're very low and they're extremely wide. So like, it's like you said, one hundred eighty to one thousand, and it's yeah. like. What kind of reference range is that? That's like saying, uh, oh, uh, you must be between zero and 120 years old. Like if someone wants to guess your age, it doesn't mean anything. So the yeah. actual that a range that the range that it should be for basically all guys should be anywhere from seven, eight hundred, depending on how old you are, to yeah, 1200 basically. Damn. So okay. so when someone says like 400, that's low. If you're like in your 20s, even 30s, like 400 is like. You got you got to do something about that. So yeah, mine was in the like 420, 430, and then in four or five months, it was four or five months. I more than doubled it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it, but I started at that low point. Okay. <laughs> but even up to like twelve hundred, that's like super physiological, bro. That's that, testosterone. It, you watch more plates, more dates. Hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he he's he's the thing with more plates, more dates. He's also kind of like he's in the matrix a bit, you know, with the health what, stuff. Okay, how do you mean? Well. He he's definitely uh, but in in the matrix basically means in in terms of health in the matrix basically means that you don't have the understanding of bacteria and you still have that understanding that or you still you st- you take the same view as the doctors that 
bacteria is bad and that okay. you need to kill bacteria. And then from there, you kind of, you formulate all your other beliefs and they stack on top of this lie at the bottom, basically. So he's still in that camp, if that makes sense. Okay, right. <laughs> And what camp are you in then? What like what's your line <laughs> of thinking with all of this stuff, and and what's your process, and what's involved when it comes to increasing testosterone without giving away? All yeah, your yeah, I got it, I got it. My, well, my camp would be, I, I mean, I would take a look at the other side and say, well, the track record of the people in those camp, in that camp of uh, mainstream medical uh, approach, maybe they're not doing too well. You know, when you look at like the disease rates, autism, etc., everything is through the roof. Those things are like well documented facts, and you think. Well, maybe those guys don't have it down too well either, you know, and if you were to, and then what, and so what I do is basically I flip kind of everything on its head and I say, well, what happens if you do very much the opposite of what they propose and uh, results are going very well. <laughs> okay. And what are some of the things you do? I mean, you're drinking milk. Right. So yeah. Like, yeah, the milk, I mean, the it's mil not breast milk, is it? No, no. Okay, this cool, is, this is some local cow milk. Okay. Nice. Um, basically, um, the things that I do. Well, I can give you some examples. So if you, well, one, okay, a few things. So one thing is I try and consume a lot of bacteria mm -hmm. as much as I can, basically. Interesting. And the way that you do that, well, where is bacteri bacteria prevalent? It's in food, unprocessed whole foods, which are not heated, not cooked. Mm -hmm. So that's what I personally do. You don't have to do that at all. So but does that mean, sorry to interrupt, that, like this milk is unpasteurized or how does all that work it's like comes straight out of a cow basically and it's going straight into you or is that out of a <laughs> out of a milk carton out of a milk carton from a grocery store like, no no they, they, i would i would never drink pasteurized milk this is unpasteurized milk Ooh, okay does that freak you out <laughs> yeah a little bit but, i don't drink milk anyway so okay. I like oh you're know. missing out man you're missing out that tastes kind of gross on no its own. You, you got you should and, try this and i'm like pretty lactose intolerant like a little bit like i won't okay. I won't have to, if I drink milk now, I won't have to like run to the bathroom or anything, but it messes up my stomach. Okay. I don't know what your opinion is on that. Yeah. Or if you have an opinion. Well, th this is one of the, this is kind of one of the clues that could lead you to, oh, maybe, uh, maybe the, maybe that this is something good to take because yeah, it's, it's like 99% of the time, someone that is lactose intolerant can consume unpasteurized milk without any problems. Because what happens is when you pasteurize it, meaning the pasteurization process is basically where they heavily heat the milk. Yeah to a very high temperature, I don't know the exact temperature, uh, and then they boil it aggressively. And then not only do they boil it aggressively, but then they do something called homogenization, okay. where they mix the cream into the milk so that there's no separation of cream and milk. So what happens with raw milk is that you, or un unhomogenized milk is that you get the cream at the top and then the, the re remaining milk, which is like the lean, uh, the, the low fat protein, and then you can mix it all together. So yeah, what happens when you do that is that you destroy the enzyme called lactase, which is required to digest the lactose. So that's why you get lactose intolerance. It's, it's just a, it's simply the lack of enzyme in the food. Where do you get this? This is from, uh, I actually, every Friday here in Cape Town, you can pick this up from uh, like a farm delivery, a farm drop off point in, okay. in the town. You should, you should get into it. Yeah. Everyone yeah, that tried it, because I, I met a lot of guys here from GCC and a lot of them actually, some, some of whom are my clients. And, uh, yeah, I did like a big drop. I I ordered loads because I knew everyone wanted to try. It. Everyone sees it on my Instagram, and uh, yeah, I gave them I gave them some. I gave them some cream as well, which is essentially just I, what ice cream is made out of. Yeah, and uh, they were like, "Holy shit, bro!" So you so you have both the cream on the top and and you mix it all together. Or? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. So just to clarify, so you get you get milk, and yeah. then what they do is they take the cream. Yeah. From the top, and they sell the, the cream separately, oh, right. and then they make uh, yogurt or something with the with the skimmed milk. Yeah, okay. So you can buy the cream by itself, and that is like that just tastes like crack. It's like ice cream. <laughs> if you put honey with that, it's like holy shit. Okay. This is this is insane. Nice. So uh, yeah, I gave that to the guys, and they had never tried it, and they were like, holy shit, this is good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna have to give that a crack for sure. Yeah. And then what else? Like your diet is your your Instagram handle is Oscar Vore. Are you like <laughs> on a carnival diet or? What's yeah, that all about? yeah, it's kind of misleading. That, that's not your last name, is it? No, Vore of, of course, that would be okay, too much yeah, of a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, but uh, yeah, it's kind of misleading the name, to be honest, because like I'm not a fan of like the the carnivore diet, especially the kind of mainstream way of doing it. Okay. So uh, it's kind of misleading name. It just it was just catchy at the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I basically do more of like what you could call like a, a um, like a raw paleo diet. That would be more accurate. That's what I do personally. Um, what does that mean? Well, pa paleo basically means like whole foods. You can say like essentially it would be like a food, yeah, whole foods, but then not cooking them. So like raw. Okay, <laughs> that's and, what I do. By whole foods, you mean like 
grains and vegetables and stuff like that. No, no, just like, well, I mean, what other foods actually like any animal products and then a select few fruits and some juices. That's what I do. None of it cooked. I personally don't do cooked. Do you eat meat? Oh, yeah. I eat like a kilo a day. Raw. 100%. Dude, what the <laughs> fuck, man? <laughs> Not chicken. Don't tell me chicken. Chicken has is really as a rotational piece of the. the so diet. what's what's this all about? Salmonella poisoning and not heating your chicken up enough. And I mean, literally, restaurants have like a minimum temperature that yeah. they have to cook the chicken. That's food. just that's just uh, that's just based on like the that's just based on the belief that bacteria is bad. And and like I I kind of take the opposite view. And uh, when I apply it myself, amazing. How did you start? doing this because i mean there's self-experimentation and then there's that like <laughs> someone's got to tell you like eating raw chicken is okay or something or you just dove into it yourself yeah there, there's a bunch of research there's a bunch of books and uh there's obviously a lot of research about bacteria also um and there's all it, it basically started i did the carnivore diet myself for 100 days 100 days straight like very strict and uh naturally what happens when someone does the carnivore diet is that people start to cook have you ever done it before Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How I'm a, so I'm on keto right now. Okay. And I did carnival for like a stint of it, and then I introduced veggies. And yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. Okay. How long? How long did you do the carnival thing for? Probably three or four weeks, I would say. Okay. Just, just. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did you feel? Pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People feel good. People feel good, and they usually do it anywhere from like you said, two, two, four weeks to mm. even three months. Obviously, some people do it longer term, but then they kind of feel like, oh, maybe I should have something else here. So I did it for a hundred days okay. and basically what happens is, and maybe you had this experience also, when someone does the carnivore diet, they gradually get more and more either bored or sick of like cooking steaks twice a day because mm. it smells a lot in the house. You have to do it. So it's kind of like, fuck, I have to cook another steak. So yeah, people get bored or they, that's it's one pretty thing. bland. Like, let's be honest, like just eating meat. Well, yeah, it, yeah it, it is, it's also bland. And then uh, people, often people will get naturally attracted to for a kind of different reasons, even just like pure laziness of like, I don't want to wait any longer, just cooking the steak less. So they have like a rare steak, for example, or uh, even like a, what you call blue steak. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was happening. And I was just like, I can't be asked to wait any longer. And then um, I saw some people eating YouTube, uh, eating meat on raw meat online on YouTube in a kind of like triggering sense of like- Like the liver king? No, no, this was way before. Okay. I've been do- I was, I'm the liver king way before that. Okay, I was, I was okay. doing liver king way before the liver king. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's some there's some guy his his his, account, his YouTube account got banned now because he was like I don't know he was also go- saying some other stuff, and he would go to like vegan uh, protests, and just start eating like pig heads or like mm, I a, think I saw that like guy. a is rabbit. He, is he an Australian guy? Do you know? No, he's from okay. uh, Latvia or something, okay, right. Eastern Europe. Random, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he he was living in Germany and he was going to all these protests, and uh, he was like yeah, just eating like a, a rabbit or something like. Re- like Ew. like like <laughs> triggering very triggering yeah. and i saw that and obviously like on one side you're like that's kind of gross but on the other side you're like that's kind of cool mm. <laughs> and like i'm from a place in the uk which is like quite liberal and so everyone around me is like a vegan feminist and so i, I see this guy on youtube like eating a dead rabbit in at a vegan protest i'm like this seems kind of fun you know like that's that's cool i like it and uh <laughs> I, i'm like naturally attracted to things that are like i'm a bit of a maverick and so yeah i see this guy and i'm like well that looks fun and then there's other guys on YouTube also eating the raw meat. And I was like, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm already eating the steak, like basically raw. I'm like, I can't be asked to cook it. I hate the smell of, of cooked steak. I've been doing this like a hundred days straight. So yeah. then, yeah, na- I just, I just, uh, one evening I got like a flank steak. Yeah, flank steak's mm. like a standard cut of steak. Uh, and I just like, I was kind of nervous and excited. And I see this guy on YouTube eating the raw meat and I'm like, fuck, like this is kind of scary. And I'm excited at the same time. And I, I just ate this flank steak without any salt or anything. And I was like, my whole life changed in that moment. It was like wow. pure euphoria. I couldn't describe it, but I could describe it. It was like euphoria. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, everything just clicked in my head. Like everything that I'd been reading, the whole like a hundred days, like as soon, and other people have said this the first time that they ate raw meat, as soon as I did it, it was like, like just like my brain rewired or something. Something changed in my brain. I was like, this is it. Like I found it. Like I found what I was looking for. Um, so yeah, that was my, wow. that was the first time. And then since then, since then uh, that's, I've been doing it extremely strictly for three years. So okay. yeah, I nice. wouldn't, uh, once you do it and you really get the flavor for it, you can't really go back. So how do you order a steak at a restaurant then? Yeah, this, uh, this, well, this <laughs> happened in Cape Town. 
Basically, when you go, when you look at the menu, you want to go like, okay, well, what are the what are the raw dishes, which is going to be like the carpaccio, the tartar, the oysters, the sushi or sashimi. And if they have those, then I would just order like like yesterday, I ordered like five steak tartar starters. Okay. Instead of getting like a main course of a steak, so that's like the first choice. And then if they don't have that, then uh, you just I would just take like a blue steak. Okay. But what happened in Cape Town? I was I was at the menu and they didn't they didn't have any of those like uh, tartar dishes. So and then they had like this sirloin steak, which is like a New York strip in the American cut. And uh, I was like, I'll just take the New York strip. And he's like, Well, how do you want it cooked? I'm like, To be honest, man, I don't really want it cooked. <laughs> Can you just bring it to me like as is? And he's like, Wait, what? He's like, You just you want it like a bit cooked, right? I'm like, Just just bring it on the plate. And I was and like, you Just cut it with a knife. And no, 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 no. Get and, into it, or and just... like, he was a bit shocked, right? And then like 20 minutes later, I get this like. It, they they actually cut it up and stuff steak like steak tartare but it was like it had nothing on it it was like I, I was even surprised you know like it was it was pretty cool and then he just brought like it was like a big lump of like 600 grams of steak tartare wow okay yeah. dope <laughs> and then other things like alcohol and lifestyle and all of that uh-huh. it, do you drink at all um what are your thoughts on alcohol and what do you tell your clients that still want to have like a bit of a work life balance or go out and socialize for sure. and enjoy it? Yeah. I drink I drink alcohol, not that often, but uh yeah, I drink when the occasion is right for sure. I, I wouldn't want to like not it's it's very fun to drink. But I, the things I don't do is like I don't smoke cigarettes, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no there's not very much bad R- for your testosterone, right? Right. Yeah. And it, I mean, there's not much ROI to a cigarette, but alcohol is like there's a good there's a good ROI there. So what you want to do is just break even basically. Mm. And uh yeah, the more you you want to have some kind of balance, right? So if you're just like playing all the time, then you're going to be he- heading too much in one direction. You're going to be damaging your health. But yeah. if you're if you're obviously overly strict and maybe you're you're missing out on some of that kind of playful fun. So you want to find a, a nice balance between the two. And yeah, the more the more booze you drink, well, then I would just encourage you to really be a bit more strict with what you're doing the other ninety percent of the time. So how much do you think is okay? Well, it's it it's it's never good for your health ever. Yeah. So it's never really okay but at the same time it's never not okay you can just choose the degree to which you wish to be healthy it depends on your goal right if someone has like cancer and they're really sick better not to drink <laughs> for a few years you know get healthy and then yeah. uh, enjoy enjoy life well not enjoy life enjoy the alcohol but uh yeah if someone's relatively healthy then you think well don't you don't you know enjoy enjoy yourself you know do do what you want i would also say like people should really ask themselves why they drink alcohol in the first place i think yes. many Many people do it from a place of like, um, can't have fun without it or feel very nervous without alcohol. So in those cases, yeah, I think uh, I think it's good to question why you're even drinking that much in the first place. Like you see a lot of people, they're like, yeah, I'm just getting like, especially in the in some holiday period, they're like, I'm getting drunk every day. I'm like, why are you doing that? You know, like, is it some form of escapism? So yeah, I think it's good to question if you're drinking a lot and I see people really drinking a lot. I'm like, why do you drink that much? You know, I don't think it's it's coming from a good place. Yeah, yeah, I see. And the raw eggs, what's that all about? I mean, I saw on your Instagram, one of the top videos is you <laughs> sitting on, what, the bonnet of a Lamborghini eating a carton of raw eggs or something. Yeah, that yeah. was a good video. That, that got some attention. Uh, yeah, it's, well, it's the same thing. Uh, obviously, an egg is extremely nutritious and you just apply the principle that the less the egg is cooked, the healthier it is. So How does it taste? Taste is, uh, it took me a while to adjust. The raw eggs took me the most time to adjust to. The raw oh, meat was fine. shit, really? The raw eggs, yeah, I found, I, I was gagging a lot when I first tried it and it was, it was a bit weird. But what I discovered is that if you, if you do that technique where you crack it on the shell and you suck the egg white and the yolk at the same time, the taste is actually pretty good. Okay. When you do it in a glass, like Rocky Star, then it, then it, you're, you're kind of gagging. Don't do that. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, you can't, that's what most, most people that I, I say to try it to end up doing that because it's a bit easier. But then you're like, you're swallowing like a whole yolk and you can kind of feel it going down your throat. It has that texture. Whereas when you suck it straight out of the shell, it's like, it's, it's over quickly. Okay, well, I made a plan for us. Oh, shit. Yeah, you can you can show me how it's done, <laughs> hey? And then maybe I'll do it with you. These are Boom. these are jumbo eggs. I gotta, I gotta make a little video of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very nervous now because you said it's, <laughs> it's the one that took the longest to adjust to. All right. Here we go. All right, you're going to show me how to do let's it. Let's go, let's go. All right, take, are you, okay, take, take the smallest one. Because uh, oh, it's, it's easier. I think okay, I, this, I think that one's pretty small. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. I'll take I'll take the biggest one just for fun. Yeah, let's do it. All right, these are these are cold, so it has less flavor. So it it, it can help if you want to try it the first yeah. time you do it to make it cold. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, the the flavor is less. It's like when you have a very cold raw steak, it doesn't have much flavor. But when you leave the meat out for a while, you'll 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 taste it more. Yeah. 
So all you need to do, it's like, it's like, you know, when you see people cracking open a beer and they put a hole in the top, you need yeah. like something for the air to go through. So you just have to make like a small dent like this. That's enough. Okay. Like a small dent. Go for it. That's, that's what we're going to suck out of? Or no, no. That's it, just the air. That's yeah, just the, the air. bottom or the top? Doesn't matter. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Not too much though. The okay. mistake people make it. Yeah. Okay. That, that can be the suction hole. Okay. All right. And then on, you want to cover it with your finger so it doesn't fall out. Okay. Then on the other side, you want to do like a, a small dent, like small. See? Yeah, like just like that. Okay. Small, yeah. Like, just it just needs to, just for the air. All right. So I, I I don't know. Is that enough? That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> All right. And then you can either pick a bit off the top of the other side so that is definitely uh, gonna okay, come well, out. Mine's mine's open. Well, so then good then you're go, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what the key is that you need to just re well, firstly just relax, enjoy it. Okay. And then uh, yeah, you just have to suck so that it actually comes out like pretty hard yeah it's not like a shot where it's gonna the gravity is gonna do the work you okay. have to use air am i gonna get shell as well that's fine okay all right yeah. cheers we, we cheers bro cheers <laughs> let's go oh, wait wait let me take a video of the chill okay okay <laughs> i'm very nervous right, bro. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> let's do it <coughs> <laughs> you did it half all right all right that's enough that's, for me. that's good that's good. That was good. God damn. It's not the worst thing. I could see myself getting used to it. Yeah, oh yeah. That I did someone else did it recently and he was like, "Bro, I quite like it. I quite like it." Oh. And and that that's what happened. That's what happens basically. You got you got to think, right? If you take my viewpoint, like you what your what your brain wants, the whole its whole life is just unpasteurized fats, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. like the main thing that the brain wants. And this might be the first time that someone has ever eaten or when they're drinking the cream that I described earlier the raw cream, like that might be the first time they've ever eaten in like 20 to f however old the person is, 20 to 30 years of existence. No. They've never ever eaten unpasteurized fats. And it's like the brain wakes up in that moment because that's, that's what it wants. Okay. Well, it actually, it, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was just like, I think it's more mental thing. Like oh, just, it's you always just psych yourself out. You're like, oh, this is gross. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. you like, believe it. But it, it wasn't that bad yeah. in terms of flavor. It's kind of like- Okay, eating, you, did do, you did do most of the egg. That's good. I got most of it. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, I, I got some of the oak, the yolk for sure. A little, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but we're good. We've done yeah, it now. Right. We, can, we can put this all aside. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sweet, man. And then on to other things, right? Like you're yeah. a member of the GCC uh -huh. inner circle thing, right? Um, what oh, sure. you have like a whole stack of GCC- nfts how do you know <laughs> did you you told me about that oh yeah. oh yeah because i was i was i was looking to to, uh, to offload some yeah I why have, why do i have offload why? them why do you have so many oh well i saw it as an investment opportunity so okay i figured uh i thought i i'm a i was a bit late to buy them so i was like i kind of bought the just before the i kind of you know like you say you have that saying buy the rumor sell the news and uh yeah kind of it went up and then i bought and then it went up a bit more and then it went down and now it's kind of starting to go up as Eman is starting to promote it on his Instagram. He's got some plan and a big announcement in the next 24, 48 hours. Okay. So uh, yeah, I don't, I can't say exactly what he's going to say, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to sell them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so okay. that's okay. all so, I'm going to so say. It's pretty juicy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How was the event? Oh, the event was crazy. Tell me about it. It's like a week long thing. And what, what sort yeah, of stuff yeah. did you get up to? Yeah, so it was like a five day event with uh, with Pete. With e Eman was there for one day of the event. And uh, yeah, we just did some fun stuff. It's it's more about who you're with, right? So mm. this is like, uh, it was like 16 guys, many of whom are making quite some money. Uh, and so yeah, naturally, if someone's making quite some money, they're usually pretty smart in a business sense at least. And so yeah, naturally the conversations are, are good. There's a lot of like alpha being shared. Yeah. So yeah. What sort of stuff did you get up to? Well, we went shooting guns. We went on a yacht on uh, along the coast. Nice. And then... Uh, when wine tasting, wine tasting is a great thing to do for like groups because everyone is just getting really loose. <laughs> then we went to a strip club. <laughs> yeah, which which one did you go to? Mavericks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, that place it. is rough, man. That place is rough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go back. No. And then, uh, yeah, and then we had the the two set a uh, few sessions like business sessions, and then uh, that's I think that was it basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then um, let's. Sick. Are you a, a part of any other masterminds, or is that like the only one? I mean, I'm in quite a few. Okay, it's been well, a, it's been a good uh, client acquisition strategy for me to join masterminds, right. and then uh, naturally people will follow you on Instagram, and then they get they see the Instagram stories, client results, and yeah. then they yeah they inquire basically. Which other masterminds are you a part of? Uh, Capital Club is one. 
That's Steve Tan's one, hey? Yeah, Steve. Oh, because okay. oh, you're like e-commerce too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah Steve's yeah. a buddy of mine because I speak at a lot of the same conferences that he speaks at. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah so how- St- Steve Tan, that one's uh, that one's good. That's more of like, that's just business. Yep. Those guys aren't so lifestyle, for now at least. We'll see in the future what they do. Uh, but yeah, I'd be pretty bullish that Capital Club will do well, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it attracts, it attracts some high-level guys. Yeah, very yeah. cool. No, From I want to make that one of those. Yeah. yeah, but th- he sells those by the event, right? It's not like an annual membership or anything. Yeah, it's yeah. Like everyone's like, everyone's asking me like, "Hey, how do you join Capital Club? How do you join Capital Club?" I'm like, "Just go to the event. Like, there is no, uh, yeah, there's, there's, it's not like a Discord or something like that. For now, I think that's obviously in the works or it's on its way. But like, yeah, right now it's, it's just about the events and those obviously announced on steve's instagram luke's in, luke belmar's instagram stuff like that yeah yeah okay cool yeah and that's, that's the nice thing about living in dubai i guess you can like travel around so easily to all these different events here yeah yeah, yeah. D- dubai is a good spot i like yeah. it a lot have you been there no i'm going for the first time on february 24th why, why don't you have a tax set up there because if you're from australia it's very it's relatively easy i have a tax set up elsewhere okay yeah, yeah. Where, like it's Van- one of those like elusive kind of things that we don't uh, talk about uh, yeah, no, no. okay, okay. Um, yeah no it's just, like offshore structuring and stuff like that Excellent. i'm not an australian tax resident anymore and i haven't been here long enough yet at all to really fall under that category in south africa so okay um yeah it's it's set up overseas and nice. there's some intricacies <laughs> and whatnot yeah yeah that's good. Uh, but i think i will i do want to spend some time in dubai because the crowd there seems way more interesting and entrepreneurial compared to Cape Town. Like there's not that much going on in the summer. Yes. But mm. as soon as summer is over, everyone just clears out. Right. And then, then it's boring. And but you can't even stay here anyway, right? Because of the taxes. Yeah. So I'm a temporary resident, so I can stay here. It's it's all really complicated okay. and convoluted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I can stay here. Uh, but again, it's just like, there's not much going on. Like only now in the summer, like I've been hanging out with Pete a bit. Obviously now I've met you, yeah, some yeah. other guys that are here from overseas and, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and I think in order to really progress with business and be constantly almost like egged on and, and encouraged to hey. like grow, you have to hit, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you have to hang out with like people that are doing cool shit, uh-huh. right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm going over there to seek. But tell okay. me about your experience with it. Yeah, Dubai. So I've been there since September. Actually, yeah, yeah, September. And... um. I'd say it's good for the most part. I'd say it's like extremely good place for productivity. Uh, people say it's very distracting, but that's only, I, I don't I don't really see that. It can be if you want it to be, but for the most part, I'd say it's like extremely productive place to be. Everything runs 24 seven, like massage, anything that you want at your house, you have it instantly, mm-hmm. pretty much. And that's obviously massive for like productivity. Um, so yeah, productivity standpoint, very good. I think uh, there's obviously a lot of high level people. So it's very easy to meet someone there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah business good relationships good for good for meeting other guys i would say but not necessarily uh not necessarily like best friends everyone's kind of looking for something there which yeah, is understandable because right. uh, i think everyone kind of has that mind that kind of brain if they are living in dubai for the most part and then yeah for, for dating girls there is like terrible like terrible re- really bad what because they're all looking for something or no no i mean well what kind of girls are there it's like one you have like the prostitutes and stuff like that so obviously you want to be avoiding that. <laughs> then you have like the air hostesses. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have like the air hostesses. I don't know. They're like 21 to, I don't know, like 26 or whatever. And like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, you don't really want an air hostess as a, as a, as a girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, and then you have like the like the 25 to 30 year old like working women like who work in companies and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. That's yeah, the that's is. that's like the dating options there. So you need to you need to fly girls in for sure. Yeah. Okay. And then what do girls think when you tell them that you eat raw steak and, <laughs> and eggs and all this <laughs> shit? How how do you how do you navigate dates with all of that? Bro, you go on a dinner date. You just have to. It's you. It's only as weird as you make it. Yeah, that's true. So for cool me, it's like it's just what I do, you know. And uh, yeah, I I'm like no 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 shyness about it, you know. Like that's it's just dope. what I do. And uh, yeah, yeah, they they sometimes they like it. Sometimes they're like, what the hell, but they regardless of the thing itself they like the confidence so yeah um yeah that's i just do my thing always just no vegans <laughs> yeah <laughs> if they're vegan that's a big turn off yeah that's like a major turn off yeah the things that are most unattractive in a girl is uh like med school and veganism <laughs> med school <laughs> yeah but, well because you got to think like i said right my how i do things is kind of on the other side so if they're in med school they have a lot of that brainwashing that uh is hard to undo yeah okay yeah you mentioned conspiracy stuff before but you didn't really get into it i think was it in relation to the testosterone or 
more like so. just gen- well All the bacteria stuff. Yeah, exactly that that kind of stuff. And why is it why why is it so demonized when people who do it seemingly have great results, stuff like that? So it's, it's it can be interesting to explore those things. Yeah, because testosterone has it's been reducing by one percent in males every year or something for like, like forty that. years. That's what the statistics are. Yeah. Why is that happening? Well, it's it's the environmental factors. Well, it's always physical and mental, right? So there's definitely some kind of attack on on uh, mental health of, of of people in general, not just guys, and that that's obviously going to have an effect. The kind of the the meta of like feminizing society, stuff like that. Yeah. That's obviously going to have a negative effect. Then there is all the physical side, and obviously that's that's uh, that's related to the environment, the foods that we're eating, um, the water that we're drinking, the water that we take showers with, all of that kind of stuff. That mm-hmm. that all the physical factors is is really the main the main driver or the thing that you can change the fastest. I would say is is the physical. Do you, I had an interesting conversation with Pete in here about tap water? Do oh you, yeah. Do you drink tap water? I don't really drink water. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I hydrate with milk. <laughs> Obviously, the food that I'm eating itself has a lot of water component to it. Mm. Um. So yeah, I don't drink too much water. Just if I was like sweating a lot, running stuff like that. But yeah, in general, I don't drink too much water. If I was to drink water, then yeah, I would never drink tap water. Yeah. Ever. Okay. What kind of training do you fit into this whole regimen? How does the sports and athleticism side fit into this? Yeah, I, I just do it. Me personally, I do a lot of boxing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Boxing boxing is key. Super key. Uh, and then, yeah, I do some lifts, like some calisthenics in between and okay. some, some compounds. You've been boxing for long? Like a year and a half. Okay, nice. Yeah. How, how much fun is it? Hey, like I was. You're doing it as well. Like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. so key, man. I wish I did that when I was like, eleven. <laughs> yeah, and it's so good for like not just your body, but like your mental oh, health yeah. and mind and confidence mm-hmm. and all of those things as well. Yeah. Are yeah. you doing Muay Thai or boxing? I'm just doing straight up boxing. Yeah. I got my first fight on oh, March damn. 25th. Yeah. Shit. So I'm I'm training up for that. I've had like, 10, 15 shoulder dislocations though. Okay. So I'm very concerned that it's going to come out during the fight. Like we were sparring the other day and it came out again. And I've oh, got damn. eight weeks until the fight. So I'm like rehabbing super hard now for the next eight weeks. Okay. Just fingers crossed I'm ready by then. Damn. Uh, well, yeah. So do you know the opponent or is it like as a right? I don't know yet. I'm, I am <laughs> it's kind of important, it's, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's so his physical I think, attributes? I think about six weeks out, I'm going to find out who he is. And then we're going to kind of adjust our training and, and plan everything yeah. around who I'm actually fighting. But for now, we're just, just going down the normal training. What, what do you, is it just like knowing his height and... And reach essentially would be the most important thing, right? Yeah, and his like fighting style as well. Like, does he oh, fight you get on the that inside? Does he... You get that intel? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why, you going so wa- we like go, we'll go watch him or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think he trains at the set because it's it's a white collar fight, which just means like it's a casual, like a local club thing. Like you know how soccer clubs will have like a sun, Sunday sport sort of yeah, thing. So yeah. it's not super serious, um, but it means that that dude is also training at my gym, but with another coach. So I think my coach will see him fight and then oh, he'll just like, give you we'll the see alpha. him sparring. Yeah, and then Damn. then he'll give me the alpha. Yeah. That's exciting. I have seen a lot of guys I think Andrew Tate definitely got uh fighting trending. Yeah. That's why I started. Well, he introduced me to it. It's so obviously not necessarily why I started, but he was the one that showed me like fighting might be good. And uh yeah, the amount of people doing boxing now is like I I don't know. Everyone I know is doing it basically yeah. or wants to. So you followed Andrew Tate like a year ago? Year and a half ago, no, when, when you I, started I f- boxing, mm, mm, I first came across Andrew Tate in 2019. So oh, before wow. he was very famous. Okay, he he just had his like online PhD course, yeah. stuff like that, and um, yeah, I watched that, and I, I didn't really think I was also very brokey in 2019, and like someone said, oh, you should join his war room and stuff, and uh, and I was like, oh, it's one grand. Uh, I don't re- like that was a lot of money for me mm. at the time. That was like half of my monthly salary after tax, and I was like, I can't really do that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't join at the time, but I watched, I watched the PhD course, and uh, yeah, that was that was eye opening for sure. But I felt like I also felt like I was already doing a lot of that stuff anyway. So I was like, ah, I don't need it, and I, I'm kind of nervous to join because, like, yeah, I think there's a lot of high level people there, and um, yeah, I'm I'm just not there, and I was kind of maybe some lack of self confidence in 2019. Yeah. But I wish I did, but yeah. it worked out very well. The PhD <laughs> course is his dating one, or that's the dating course. Yeah, I okay. don't know if it's still available, but. Okay. Yeah. Did Did you get very into the whole dating scene, game pickup, and all of that sort of stuff? Or yes, <laughs> you did. Okay. Yeah, but like more for uh, the exit, like more for for it itself rather than the end result. I would say more for like the self development aspect. Yeah. So like day game is like the number one way to Peak, increase bro. confidence. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. It's like fighting, bro. It's like you got to do day game. You got to do fighting. If you Just, ca- if you can't do those things, you got to learn. Like you should be capable of it. Yeah. yeah. So do you still do it? Even day now. game yeah 
You're not in a relationship, hey? Do you have a girlfriend? It's 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 complicated. Okay, okay. <laughs> so do you do day game? Uh, if if in, in well, the it, recent not kind of, like yeah. well. In the sense of like, if there's a nice girl in the mall or something, yeah. I'm gonna and I, it, like coincidentally I see her, then yeah, I will go and uh, say hi or something mm. if I like the look of them. But yeah, I don't like I don't I wouldn't go out and like do a session of like ten approaches. Okay. I did that a lot when I was uh, 19, 20. Yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't okay. I wouldn't do that again. Yeah, I also used to do that. It's like so good to just throw yourself in the deep end, get yeah. rejected a bunch of times, and, yeah. and also yeah. realize that like the outcome that you're looking for is not that far away uh -huh. if you just have the balls to go up and ask someone like right. if you just have the balls to go up and speak to a person yeah most of the time they're pretty chilled and they actually yeah, enjoy yeah. the interaction as well it, you know and, and then that reflects and kind of trickles down into business and everything else also it, uh, it's all in your head it's kind of like the egg where you say like it's not so bad it's the same thing or like uh yeah it's the same even in business right one of the things that i took away from meeting a lot of these guys in gcc is like the amount of people including myself that said like once I saw that making whatever figure, seven hundred, like a hundred thousand a month, a million a month was possible, I just, I just, it was, it became very easy. I just, I just never even knew it was a possibility. I think mm. it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's just like limiting belief. Everything's in the head, basically. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, tell me about your business. Are you? You're obviously doing well for yourself, but how is it structured? Do you have a team that's doing stuff for you, or is it mostly all through your personal consulting that's just very high ticket? Or how do you structure your stuff? Yeah. So, I, I, for, for, for the first year, I was doing everything myself, and I, I didn't. How, how long ago was the first year? How far through the journey? Yeah. So, are you? Ba basically, it started fully in like November. Well, kind of like end of last year. So, like okay. December. That was when I really started, and uh, yeah. Well, of twenty twenty two. That was two months ago, 2021. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Okay. a year and two months ago. Yeah, okay, that cool. was when I did my first like consultations, mm -hmm. paid consultations. I already helped a lot of people just online. Yeah. And then I realized like, I'm, but I was also quite a brokey in, in my mind at yeah. least. So I was helping a lot of people for free. So December was when I started to receive payments for consults. Uh, and then I was doing everything myself until like August of this year. And then, okay. uh, yeah, I got it to a certain point. I don't want to say exact revenue number, but yeah, yeah, of course. I got it to a, a pe when people, I tell people like, holy shit, like we should have hired way sooner. And that was definitely one of the number one business mistakes I made is I didn't hire sooner. I guess I was kind of nervous of like, I'm going to be responsible for this person's salary, like that kind of stuff. So I didn't hire for a long time. And then, yeah, I started to build the team. Now I have five employees. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going very well. It's going dope. very well. <laughs> dope, man. Congrats. And they, they're coaches that uh, you're basically replicating yourself or they're doing other support stuff to help you do your Both. job? Both. I, I, have, I have a coaching team so they can respond to questions basically yeah. almost 20, well, as much 24-7 as possible. So I have a guy in the US, have a guy in Europe, in the UK. Um, and they help to answer questions, help with the onboarding process. Yeah, okay. Very nice. And then what's the plan from here? How are you going to grow this thing? Yeah, it's going to be uh, much more into education and because uh, basically in order to get to the revenue number I want, I need to be onboarding about 50 people a month. Mm. And in order to do that, my current structure is too, it's not, it's not ready to do that. It's yeah. too, uh, it's, it, I'm still so involved. Like I check everything and that's obviously partly my fault. And I just, I just want to make sure everyone has a good experience yeah. and uh, I need to be able to train the team enough so that they can do what I do. That, that was also one thing that I found very difficult was like, how do I give everything that I know to a coach? And f firstly, I don't even need to. They just need the most part. And then the answer is basically a lot of SOPs. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I started to map the whole logic tree of like, client has this, then this, then this. And it's like, it gets, it, that's like a, a, a big job to map the whole, the whole logic tree. <clears throat> So that they can, they know exactly what to do, um, but that's basically what I need to do. And at, at that point, it was it's almost like code. Basically, mm -hmm. I was trying to code my whole brain of like creating a custom consulting, basically for the person. Uh, so I need to uh, once that's kind of done, then uh, I can I'll be able to handle the like the 50, 50 onboardings a, a month, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And then what, so what about selling straight up information, like selling a course, or do you already do that as well? Well, the, the course is included, but okay. That. Well, it's it's an interesting decision. For a long time, I was like, no, it has to be very personalized because that's how you help people the most, right? And then as you go more away from that into just selling information, then the you, ha you accept that most people aren't going to even do it. Mm. And and so I, I kind of for a while I was like, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to accept that. You know, like I want everyone to get a good result. And uh, so yeah, basic. But what I'm saying is like just selling the course doesn't really help people that much because mm. very few of those people are actually going to action it. And then the question is, should you care about that? 
I don't know, but <clears throat> I, I see such great results with people when they get more uh, personalized advice. So <clears throat> it's, it's ba essentially the way to do it is like some kind of hybrid of like education with consulting uh, or personalized recommendations and then individual support. Because it's, it's also people's health, right? So the way I have the program structured is that people have a one-on-one -on -one channel yeah. with, with me, my coach, and them. And then they, they have obviously the, the shared channels. Because if you have a guy and he's got a health problem, like he has a stomach problem or, you know, I get a lot of guys with like low testosterone, all the symptoms of like erectile dysfunction, et cetera. It's like, they're not going to want to shout about that in a group. They need an individual, right? So that's why I have it set up so that they have like a, a individual channel so that they don't, are not broadcasting to the world that they have these problems yeah, or at yeah. least to my, my group with like a uh, hundred people in it. So yeah. So I, I, you need to have like the one-on-one -on -one stuff for health. It's it's very interesting. I'm also seeing like there's obviously like the three areas, right? There's like health, relationships, and making money online, and like I'm I see a lot of differences between those three and how how they're taught, etc. And it's it's very interesting to see like the, how they have a slightly different nuance or way of doing it. If you know what I mean, like yeah. the health stuff is much more individual. People don't really want to dwell on it for too long, whereas like the relationship stuff is like, it's kind of all the time in a way, like it's, it's much more about in real life stuff as well. And just connecting people rather than information per se, it's kind of just more doing it and having like the social stuff. And then the making money online stuff is like, that's the biggest one for sure for people. Like the biggest source of um, anxiety for people or the, the place that they're most yeah anxious, anxious about anxiety is making money online. That's like the biggest. I think that's what people care about the most. So and I that's think, why we see these crazy scalable, offers, yeah. like biz op offers where people are making a shitload of money. Yeah, but yeah. for sure. Because that's that's the that's the biggest source of stress for people. And that people people really think, and of course it's never true, but you maybe you have to do it to discover it. That if I have the money, then uh, I'll get the girls, you know, and stuff like that. But it's just not the case. <laughs> yeah, but I think everyone has to go through that journey to find yeah, out themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like we can sit here and talk about that all we want, but people will still not believe it. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, it's easy for you to say because you guys have got the money or you're doing all this business <laughs> stuff. So obviously yeah. girls want you. How did you find dating changed once you did start to make money? Well, well it depends, right? If, if you want to just go with like slutty girls and girls that are shallow, mm -hmm. then you can just flex stuff on the internet and it does produce the effect of girls becoming interested. That's obviously also kind of like making the money doesn't make you happy. Doing that stuff definitely doesn't make you happy, but most people, they need to do it to realize it. Yeah. So I would say that uh, outside of that, it doesn't really, it does, nothing really changes. You know, you still uh, most, like the, the best girls don't care that much in a way. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's only changes in your head, I think. And uh, the same stuff still applies. You still need to be a good person outside of this. and. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a, it's just a, it's just another like it's it's useful definitely it definitely helps and obviously like you got to think if you're a girl like you don't want a broke guy you know like mm. <laughs> if if you're broke uh, it's gonna be harder to get like a really a really good girl for sure yeah I think there's a fine line between what a gold digger is and what a girl that is just looking for an ambitious guy yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't really see that or consider that either I mean obviously there are just gold diggers that all they want is to just get with a dude for his money yeah yeah but. I don't think it's gold digging if you're a woman attracted to a guy that has money because he has ambition and all of these other things. Like you got to think about the things that a man needs in order to get to the point where he's built a business that mm -hmm. can make money, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is like good character, being charismatic, being able to take care of someone or multiple people. Like mm -hmm. if you got employees and all that, um, you know, whatever it is. But all of these things are the attractive part that women are, are in turn drawn to, not mm -hmm. just the money. Right? For sure. It, yeah. it also depends on the values of the girl. I think people often forget like girls, girls, some, some girls value money and kind of objects and things, things like that, or like shallow, what we could see as shallow objects much more than others. Some really do not care about designer stuff. Yeah. Some really do. And just, just same as guys, some guys are completely unmoved by, they don't even know what Gucci is and that's fine. And it's the same with girls. Like girls also have personality types and some type, some types of personality are going to value brands and status stuff more than others and uh yeah it's going to depend on the girl basically yeah so do you get around brands and brand names and whatnot because i mean you, you have a very nice watch yeah uh, i know nothing about watches okay so tell me about that as well yeah yeah so yeah so this is kind of it's, it's kind of like what we're talking about here with like where someone needs to uh make money to realize that it doesn't help that much with relationships or what i said about like you might need to go with some shallow slutty girls to realize that it's not worth it 
it's the same with like brands. So like when I first started making some money, I went like all in on mm-hmm. on the designers. And and I was kind of going for like for a while I thought I was gonna go like the Liver King route, like maximum attention, which means like I'm gonna wear like a Versace tracksuit and uh eat raw eggs at the same time and i was doing that for a while and i was kind of i was excited by that i I do like shiny stuff you know like somewhat it's in my personality type to like that so for a while i was doing that i was wearing all like the designers all the logos and then very quickly i i i realized that it's it's it i look like a like an idiot and uh iman iman definitely helped with that when uh i saw I i first found out about iman in like june last year so i didn't know anything about him until the day before the gcc mint okay and then i started to watch his um youtube videos and yeah i saw what he was wearing and it was like oh that's kind of refreshing i I like it and then i saw him explain in some videos what he does like yeah go get some like unbranded clothes and get them fitted and then yeah very quickly i like completely revamped the whole wardrobe to like just i also part of like caring about health is also caring about the kind of materials that you're wearing and so forth so i just started to go with like everything organic cotton or like cashmere natural materials and then started to get the stuff fitted and now I don't wear anything with with logos. Maybe okay. shoes or something, but I can't even think that I have any logo shoes. So yeah, now I I don't I'm not into that at all. And I, I just get like ma- nice materials and very plain stuff. Mm, and okay. uh, it's a different look. I I still like the brand stuff. It does it does make you be it does make people perceive you a certain way, and uh, that can be useful for certain objectives. But I, and I still somewhat like them, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wear like a Palm Angels T-shirt again. You know, I did that for a while. And yeah, and that's that's the whole idea of the watches, right? Is like so that people perceive you in a oh, certain yeah. way when you're hanging out with like particular social circles and whatnot. I mean, how does all that work? Because yeah. I, like I, I'm wearing a Fitbit right now. I <laughs> bought a Rolex maybe three or four weeks ago just okay. because I had got sick of people giving me shit about my Fitbit. Which Rolex? Um, it's a Submariner like a blue and gold mm-hmm. one. Yeah, it's like just a basic one. Okay. Um, why, when would I wear it? When yeah. should I wear it? When shouldn't <laughs> I wear it? Like I was always under the impression that if you're hanging out with the right people and you're doing the right stuff, like yeah. you're doing cool shit yourself, people don't care what you're wearing on your wrist because they know this guy's legit. He's uh-huh. got a software company or an agency or whatever, yeah. whatever this person is doing. Um, but I've watched Iman's videos and he, I mean, one of the lines that was kind of poignant was if you don't believe that, you know, what you wear on your wrist matters, then you're hanging out with the wrong social circles. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like... It's true. It's true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so this is an AP 50th anniversary. I bought this like three or four weeks ago. And uh, the reason I bought it, I had a Rolex before. And uh, yeah, living... It, the Rolex was good when I was living in Spain because it's like no one has a Rolex where I was at least in Spain, not in like Marbella or something. So that was so that, that was appropriate for that environment. And then when I moved to Dubai... <clears throat> I would go to dinners because I, I, as well as my main program, I do like some uh, more high ticket one-on-one coaching for like high net worth individuals. And I would be going to lunches with prospective clients and they have like a $300,000 Richard Mill on. Mm. And they're like looking at my watch. Like I, like I can see their eyes like, really? bouncing, you know? And I'm like, when th- that was like the last straw when that happened, when I went to this lunch with this guy with the Richard Mill and I was like, yeah, I can't wear this watch. I'm being like negative. It's negatively affecting my sales revenue. So, um, that's why I bought this watch in particular, uh, but yeah, that, that's that's kind of it basically. And I think I think the reason I bought this is like you need to have a well. I don't know much about watches, right? But in my head, I was like, okay, you need you need to have a watch that's basically more than fifty Gs. Yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. like a that's like a turning point, at least in the current prices. And someone that knows about watches might say that's wrong, but like, yeah, that was basically what I understood. And like, I was like, okay, I just need a big boy watch that's respectable and mm. in these kinds of circles. And uh, that will do basically. Like, I don't really like this watch that much. Like, it looks cool for sure. I like the shine and shit, but this is just a means to an end, you know. Like, yeah, like I'll, I will, I will sell this watch soon, like yeah. in six months or something. My my plan is actually to buy a farm. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I, I, Cape Town wasn't even on my like list of options, but uh, now I'm like, I could buy a farm in Cape Town for sure. And have, uh, have you been out and checked out some of the? Not yet, not yet. Okay. No, I, I need to understand more. Well, before I even in, invest the time, I need to see if it's even possible. You know, like foreign-owned land might not be possible here. Depends on the country, the rules. But 
Pete, can, Pete was like, it, it can help. It, you can buy land here. Yeah. So, so I own this place. Um, okay. You have to put a like anyone can be a foreign investor and buy it by real okay. estate in Cape That's Town. Good it's to no know. problem. You have to put fifty percent deposit down. Uh -huh. um, which I mean, if you're going to buy a farm, it shouldn't be that much of a problem because mm -hmm. you can get them. Like, it's, it, land out there is not super expensive, right? Yeah. But you basically have to put fifty percent cash down that's introduced from a foreign source. So okay. I had to provide paperwork saying that this money came from outside of South Africa. Okay. Um, and then you have to apply for a loan for the other half. If you're not going to buy the whole thing cash, apply for a loan for the, for the other half. And you got to obviously provide some income information and stuff oh, like they, that. Oh, they so give that, you a loan? Yeah, they gave me a 50% loan on this. What's yeah. the interest? Hi, dude. Like what, um, like 10%? It's like, yeah, like 9% or something like okay. that. Okay. Um, that's not, but yeah, 9%. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you're trading, like that's good. If you're trading. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. like, I can make more than 9% a year in investments. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So <laughs> so it's a pretty good gig. Um, but yeah, you should check out like some of the farmland around here. Yeah. Like the, the countryside is really beautiful, dude. And mm -hmm. you can even, if you go far enough out, like uh, have you been, how long have you been here for? Like two weeks. How long are you planning on being here for? I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I got to go to Mexico. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, if you come back, let me know and then we'll yeah. go. I'll take you for okay. a drive and show you some places. Um, but if you go down the coast, you can probably find a farm that's on the ocean, which would be really dope. Nice. I think. Yeah. yeah. What what I would want is a farm near some hot springs. That's oh. kind of my vision or even hot springs within the land. Okay. So that's what I, and I want to be able to host events there with my clients. That is dope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And live there maybe. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. three months a year or something. Yeah. Have some babies, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. Why hot springs? What's Well, hot, hot springs is like extremely good for your health because of the minerals in the water and the, the way that the body detoxifies through the skin. And the hot springs is the number one way to promote that. Okay, yeah. very cool. Do you do saunas and steam rooms and red light therapy mm -hmm. and all of these other things as well? Yeah, so, so, so I'd say dry sauna is fine. Okay. But uh, the, the, you want to be taking showers frequently. Because what happens is that you start to sweat a lot, which is good because there's obviously a lot of toxins in the sweat. But then if you don't wash it off, what happens? The skin just reabsorbs them. So it's important to take showers regularly when you're doing the, the sauna. Within the one sauna session. Yeah, taking, like every five minutes okay. for sure. Ideally, right? Ideally, yeah. you, you can be as autistic as you want with it. And then the steam room, I would never do that because it's yeah. you're just inhaling tap water is one thing. Then it's also damaging the sinuses at the same time. So steam room, I wouldn't recommend. Oh uh you said red light therapy i never really got into that i never felt like i needed it i always live in hot countries so yeah. never felt like I, I needed to do it something i would do once i have more of a stable base um other hacks i mean I'm, yeah i wear blue light glasses stuff like that but uh all the time and those blue light glasses these are blue I, yeah I, I guess i woke up kind of late right and uh yeah, yeah. No, I don't usually wear them. I, sometimes I wear them. Sometimes yeah. I forget that I even have them on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. And then other biohacky stuff. Do you do anything else? The diet is the main thing. You yeah. got to think like I, most people's perception of diet is just, just the foods that you eat and maybe they care if it's organic or not, which is just like touching on the quality of the food. But like, yeah, I'm doing a lot of advanced stuff with diet and uh, that's kind of my number one hack. And that's kind of my edge, let's say. Speaking of testosterone, TRT seems to be a thing just from watching YouTube videos and watching more plates, more dates and stuff like that seems to be a thing that's recently become almost like popularized. Yeah. Um, what's your take on all of that? Well, I have a lot of clients who did TRT and it wrecked them. And then they come to me and say, hey, uh, I tried the, the, let's say the mechanical route or not mechanical, sorry, uh, the, the conventional TRT route or the modern, I don't know what we want to call it, maybe modern. And it didn't work for me. And uh, yeah, I see you obviously very much on the other side, which is more of the natural side. And yeah, I want to try it out and uh, try that, see how that works. So that's like a very common uh, client persona or whatever, or prospect that would come to me and say that. So yeah, I've seen what it does to people and yeah, it's not pretty. What does it do to people? Well, it just destroys, it destroys the sperm quality. Yeah. Some people start to build muscles so fast that they can't recover in time, things like this. Uh, then people don't like the practicalities of it, mm -hmm. of like, uh, especially if you're a traveling entrepreneur, it's like you can't be carrying shit around all the time or you have to source it when you're in different locations, stuff like that. Uh, and then, yeah, some people kind of intuitively think like, especially like an entrepreneur, right? You don't want people are, are so into uh, freedom, like he uh, location freedom, time freedom. And then suddenly you're thinking like, what is this freedom when I have to inject this crap all the time into me? Like, this isn't freedom, you know? And then they start to kind of intuitively realize like, yeah, I'm I'm relying on this thing. And my whole entrepreneurial life, I've been not wanting to rely on anything except for myself. So mm -hmm. that's also a common thing that people say to me. Yeah, so, interesting. And yeah. then how's how's the pathway getting off it? Like, do you manage to get their levels back up to what it was when they were on it? It takes or? it takes some time for sure. Yeah. And like, 
because you, you've stopped the body's natural production. So then you want to do things that accelerate the natural production of it. And yeah. that, that, that's going to take a while. People have to accept that, especially like, because I do a lot of, I do semen tests with people. So you might've seen the same as like testosterone decreasing. Sperm count is also like all time low. So I do really? a lot of like, see, I, like say, sometimes depending on the guy, obviously we will do like some semen analysis in the lab um, as part of like, yeah, in the first few weeks of starting. So we want to get that reference. And like you see when people do the TRT, like they're like on paper, they are infertile. Like they couldn't get a girl pregnant in that moment, mm. which is crazy. And that takes a while to regenerate. Yeah, right. What What's the idea of doing like the semen analysis stuff? Is it some, because I'd imagine if you're not trying to have a baby, it's not really your number one priority, but is it just more reflective of other health? Exactly. Health stuff yeah, it's, it's, it's just like, it's just reflective of testicular health, basically endocrine health. Yeah. So yeah, you got to, it's, it's just a reference point that I thought I saw that no people were doing. And I thought, well, that's interesting that I can explore that. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, I have a lot of before and after tests. I'm, I also want to have options in my business, right? Maybe I want to create a fertility clinic at some point, then mm. it will be a good data point for me to gather. Yeah, that's cool. It's also just for my purely my own research, right? I want to see like when people start to apply my my diet health principles, what what happens under the hood, let's say. So I try to get as much data there as possible with like, I do epigenetic testing as well, mm -hmm. which tells you your biological age. And my conclusion with those tests is that they are 100% bullshit. Okay. 100% <laughs> bullshit. Right. I've had like 45 year old guys with diabetes, ex oh, like oh, maybe not almost obese or obese, do those tests. And it says that they are 36 years old. And it's like, this is a scam. This is 100% marketing where it's like, it's, it's such genius marketing, right? You do a test, you do a blood test and it tells you, Hey, you are, you are five years older than you want to be. You need to buy our health coaching. And then you need to do the mm -hmm. test again, which costs $500 in six months. So how do you make how do you make an assessment of someone's overall health? What are your what are the main things you look at? Well, well, there's the there's the blood work, and then yeah. there is what people say, and between those two things, you have to. Well, the ultimate thing is that the person is satisfied, right? And uh, you can try and guide them to feeling as good as possible. And you have the blood work, and between those two things, that's that's all you can do, right? You have the what is what what does the paper tell me? What do the what does the individual actually tell me themselves? You know, like are they uh, yeah, you could look at signs such as uh, waking up regularly with erections. That's definitely a good sign. Mm. Uh, if the person is going to the toilet six times a day, then they've definitely got a digestion problem. No doubt mm. about it. S stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sleep. What's obviously very important. Mm -hmm. um, as an entrepreneur, I know like for me, for example, right now I'm in like a super intense work period. Ideally, I would sleep less. I'm pretty precious about my sleep, but how flexible can you be on sleep and how important is it to get your eight hours versus... Yeah, can that be manipulated at all? How much do you sleep? Well, it can. It can certainly be. You can give yourself a full sense of energy with caffeine, right? And that's what people do. Yeah, I do. I <laughs> slam coffee. How smoke. much? Uh, I have probably <coughs> between two and four coffees a day. I would say that's quite a lot. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, like what three hundred milligrams of caffeine ish per coffee or altogether. Well, I think a coffee is like sixty. A Red Bull is like eighty. D yeah, a double it, shot of it, coffee. It, it depends. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Roughly. probably about three hundred milligrams. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, general, general, and this even surprised me when I started to coach people and like I've coached well over a hundred people now, 140. Okay. And, uh, yeah, like I'm surprised how quickly people can quit caffeine and come back without it, which is, that Dude, surprised me. That I, really surprised me. I quit caffeine and I was fucked for like a month. Yeah. It takes a while. Back on caffeine now. Cause, you, cause your adrenal glands are exhausted. So you need to regenerate basically. And yeah. that, yeah, you need to adhere to the diet and stuff like that to, to, to come back to life there. Otherwise you you've just, you're just exhausted. Yeah. Your, your glands are completely exhausted. Yeah. Okay. So do you drink coffee at all? Or you're like, no, no, I quit three years ago. I was like okay. addicted. Also I was smashing like 600 milligrams caffeine a day. Damn. Yeah. Okay. And you I just was, ate shit for like a month or however long it took before you. Yeah. Back. It take it definitely takes a while. And that's, uh, that's also why, so, Cause you want to balance, right? Like, especially when you're coaching someone like it's like kind of Alex Hormozzi says in his book, he's like, you want to get people great results in the first, I don't know, two to six weeks. Cause that's when it's like, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so if someone quits coffee, cold Turkey, they might feel a bit tight. It's not even guaranteed, but like there's a, there's a chance that they're going to be fatigued. So you want to try and balance like pure health, which is definitely not drinking coffee with like this, per you want to make this person happy and feel good, which means that maybe keeping some of the caffeine in there is going to be good. So yeah, it, when you first quit the caffeine, it's not you might not feel too good. So mm -hmm. you want to maybe gradually reduce that. 
definitely better to do like a herbal tea, like yerba mate, than okay. the caffeine. Because the, the thing with coffee is a seed. And you don't want to be consuming seeds in general. Because oh. you maybe heard of like anti-nutrients. No, I've heard of like um, not having seed oils, like yeah. sunflower oil and yeah. stuff. What is what is? Yeah, the so the, I mean, the anti-nutrient is the basic idea that in order for a, like just like humans and any other mammal or any other animal, pl- uh, they animals want to survive and reproduce, right? It's the same with the plant; they don't want to be dead. They want to, yeah, survive, reproduce, and in order for a plant to do that, from to defend itself from a predator, it doesn't run away like a gazelle. So it has to defend itself in other ways. That's when you see like some examples we like a stinging net or stuff like that, but then also like a lot of chemicals in the plant. And that's what it uses to defend itself. And those things wreak havoc in the human digestive tract, which is one of the reasons why you don't want to really want to be consuming plants. It's basically anti-nutrients and then fiber being hard to do, take nutrients from. So those are the two main reasons why you don't really want to be consuming nuts and seeds. Okay. Cuz we so, don't we don't really digest them. It's just it's like bird food. You got to think like what like it, from like a nature standpoint, which animals are eating seeds? It's like it's the birds, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Okay, so no caffeine if you have to have caffeine because you don't want to give it up, then go for something like yerba mate. That would be like a, a better option. Let's what, talk. what is that? Is it just like a tea? It's like tea it's a, it's a leaf. It's a it's a it's just leaves of tea which are dried. Okay. Tea leaves which are dried. Okay. And then uh, maybe processed a little bit cut up. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, smoking is terrible for you. Yeah. Um, thoughts on nicotine, though. I know of a lot of entrepreneurs that don't smoke and don't vape, but they'll have nicotine gum yeah. or nicotine toothpicks or yeah. <laughs> experiment with stuff like that for focus and heightened alertness. I did watch a Andrew Huberman video the yeah. other day, also saying that nicotine is actually not bad for you, according to him and yeah. his studies. Um, yeah. 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 So long as you don't have it in a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's the thing. It's like all of this stuff when you see like. I don't know. Do you follow like a lot of like biohackers on Twitter? Not on Twitter. Okay. Twitter's a new thing for me. I just okay. started with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, basically what, what happens is that these people are, and even Andrew himself, Andrew Huberman, they are completely subscribed to like, you could say the religion of science and okay. they, they worship studies, but the like studies are ridiculous because it basically takes one thing and it isolates it. And when in reality, nothing is ever isolated. You can never just, nicotine naturally does not appear in anything by itself. It's always with a million other things. And it's the same with taking like a multivitamin. It's like, you never just get B12 by itself. It's always with a gazillion other things in the in the strawberry, in the steak, whatever. There's like a bill- billion things there that some stuff science can't even measure. And so just taking things isolated by themselves is really stupid. Well, it's not, it's not that stupid. In my opinion, you could say it's stupid, but it's... It's not uh it's not how things actually function in reality. But people like it, you get the study, you get you kinda it's exciting, stuff like that. So what I'm saying is like those studies that people use for like the nicotine, then you get those those study if you really follow those studies, you'll end up putting like sunscreen on indoors that you see some guys doing because science says the the, the sunscreen uh, is good for your skin. So I'm gonna what? sit inside wearing sunscreen. That's the thing. That's the thing. You get the founder of Venmo. Uh, I can't remember his name, Brian Johnson. The, I don't know how much Venmo was sold for, a few hundred million dollars. Yeah. He's wearing sunscreen indoors, bro, because science said it's good. That's what, t- What's the logic behind that? Why, I haven't why looked at the study specifically, but yeah, it's something to do with the skin and how it's good for the skin, basically. Okay. Yeah. So if we can't trust scientific studies and the It's only- a point of reference. It's a point of yeah, reference. Yeah, okay. Uh, like the only real... like. The other side is to look at anecdotal evidence and what people experience themselves and stuff. Like, but how do we know what to listen to and what to do? Well, at, well, at some point you have to trust yourself and you use different references and, uh, yeah, you just you you try things for yourself and you see what really makes you feel the best whilst factoring in what the studies say. You look at, yeah, uh, empirical data and you see you, you decide what to do there. But mo- most of all is like you got to balance like how what makes you feel good in the short term with the other information points that you have, which will then help you to decide, does this make me feel good in the short term? And it's good in the long run as well. Cause obviously, otherwise if you're just focused on like immediate feeling, then you're going to probably start sniffing cocaine and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, so yeah. you got to balance like what makes you feel good there versus the data points that you have. Yeah. Speaking of cocaine and drugs, um, what's your viewpoints on psychedelics and that sort of stuff then? If well, like, obviously not for health so much, yeah, but yeah. just along this kind of line of unconventional uh, healing and medicine in a sense yeah. yeah i mean i i me and my friends 
basically, I, yeah, I, I did a lot of psychedelics in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, once I, when I went into the farm life and started to be kind of, I don't know, started to really change my, my really fix any anxieties that I had without psychedelics just by, I guess, uh, applying stoicism and uh, kind of going away from like a high stress environment. There was a period where I went very away from kind of trying to make money and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, that was good for me, for sure. And during that time, I basically just like kind of, I don't know, want to say, I don't want to say enlightened or whatever, but I definitely found a certain ease in the world and relaxedness with life. And then, so I had that period of where I felt very, uh, almost enlightened, let's say. We, I don't like that word necessarily, but whatever. And um, and then we did. I did mushrooms after that. And the conclusion was like, I don't need to do mushrooms. Like I'm on mushrooms all the time, <laughs> literally. <laughs> like I'm yeah. high all the time. And so doing those things, I don't need to do it. And then you also meet the people that do like, whenever you meet someone, it's obviously a more extreme case, but you meet someone that did ayahuasca 50 times. That person is always riddled with anxiety when i meet that kind of guy he's like bro you got to do ayahuasca you it fixed me and i'm like you are anxious as hell i can see it you're like biting your nails every two minutes and whatever so like yeah i i, I once i had that experience of like doing the mushrooms and i realized like i don't need to ever do this again like i'm high all the time mm -hmm. and people even say that to me like <laughs> after after i came back into the world into the normal world from living on the farm People were like, bro, why are you always smiling? Like, yeah, and people say that to cool. me now, like, why are you always like laughing and smiling? I'm like, I'm just, I love life, bro. Like I, I have a huge appetite for life. Like ever since I was a teenager and like, yeah, it's just, for me, it's just so, everything is very fun, you know? And uh, yeah, I don't need the mushrooms to enhance that. Like I'm very enhanced naturally yeah, <laughs> and it feels good. Through all your um, health coaching and stuff, do you yeah. also help people that are depressed or anxious? Because I mean, like usually most of the time, the cure for that is like do more exercise, right. be healthier. Yeah. Do you get people that come to you that are like, you know, I don't feel healthy, but also I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm dealing with this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And do, you, and do you help those guys? Yeah, so I yeah. would say everyone has that. And the more money, the people with more money that I work with, most of the time have greater degrees of anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. People are very scared about the world, where it's going and making money. And even the people with a lot of money, they're, they're, they're fearful because they had that fear when they started to make the money and that kind of stayed with them as they got the money. So, um, yeah, I would say everyone has that. Almost everyone that I work with has that. Uh, and my, my, my expertise is fixing people's physical health. And naturally, when you fix the physical health, those things will improve, just like you said there when you said maybe people should exercise and go out into nature and just sit on a beach and enjoy like the the sound of the waves or whatever not that i necessarily tell people to do that but you can do stuff like that uh but no uh if someone has like a fundamental problem like i, I i've had situations where like the the person will tell me the client will tell me like bro i'm like i'm really low and then i have like i have the best therapist in the world like i have some i have the he's like it's like kind of my my uh yeah he's kind of my secret weapon let's say or not so secret now obviously yeah <laughs> and uh yeah he's like He's the man, basically, and I, so I refer clients to him. Okay, what what is he? Is he just like a normal therapist, like performance business kind of? No, he, he is he, he is a, he's a wizard that is very low key. Yeah, and he does not care about money. Yeah, in the slightest. I shouldn't even say this, but like, he basically says to the person, like, you can pay me whatever you want. Yeah, I don't care. Interesting. And okay. uh, and what what actually happens is the person always says, well, how much do you want? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then he he'll say, my usual rate in the past has been this, but you can pay me whatever you want. Yeah. He's like, he's a bit of a, like a. He like a bit of a chaos agent, you know, very open-minded, let's say. And that's pretty fun. So yeah, I refer people to him when uh, when they need it. Yeah. And uh, especially like the more high net worth people. Yeah. And often, oftentimes they will uh, basically book him repeatedly for like a weekly fix my, fix my mental health basically. Or like, oh yeah, help me relax and uh, take a different perspective. That's the main thing that entre entrepreneurial people have a very similar personality type. And yeah. uh that 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 type can be very yeah kind of narrow minded and laser focused and can be very relaxed by receiving different perspectives mm. stuff like that what impact does that have on the business though oh i think if it helps it helps a the, lot the foot off the pedal you think no no but, but so, yeah but sometimes taking the foot off the pedal it's it's kind of like if you keep running up the mountain nonstop maybe you're going to you're going to start to slow down a lot whereas if you if you took a if you had a if you slept overnight at the mountain then you could start again and you're going to get to the top quicker kind of thing. You, yeah. could, you could say okay. that. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. What does your daily routine look like? 
Uh, well, okay, yeah, I, I guess the things that will be like that will be stand out and significant is like I'm eating often. Every, like I'm because I always have them. I have the milk. They have the eggs. Depending if I'm at home, I have the meat with me, right? And uh, yeah, I'm eating often. That would be one thing. I don't do, do fast. I don't do any fasting. Okay. Yeah, I like to have like I'd rather have like a bit of nutrients regularly rather than the fasting. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everything and people think, oh, I couldn't eat every every five minutes. I have to cook, or I'd have to. I'd feel heavy in my digestion. Those things don't apply with what I personally do with the raw eggs, right? Yeah. It's like you can't feel it in your stomach. Even if I eat eight eggs, it's like you don't you don't feel hungry, but like there's no there's no digestive work that has to happen. You know, I could run a marathon in that moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm eating uh, regularly. I don't do, I don't have like a religious routine or anything. It just, my thing is very focused on like, I want to maximize nutrients. And that comes from the food, which I eat regularly. Then I started to stretch a lot in the last six, seven months, something like that. Okay. It was, uh, yeah, and that, that was a real game changer. And I noticed that when I get, when I stretch, I get a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So I like to stretch in the mornings. Uh, yeah, outside of that. You meditate? I meditate through... I, I listen to a lot of music and yeah. I, I like listen to a lot of uh, like just piano tracks every day. Okay. And that's kind of the meditation. I tried like sitting down in silence and yeah, it, it never really resonated with me that hard. And uh, at this point, I don't think I need it so much. Yeah. And I find that just the relaxing music is like, instead of like sitting down to meditate and going 100% in, I'm kind of like, like I said, with the I'm high all the time thing from the mushrooms, without the mushrooms, I'm kind of like, I'm always meditating in a way. Yeah. Just by having the relaxing music. And that, yeah. that really like c keeps me calm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's I that's see. key. I can't yeah, I need the relaxing music on all the time. Yeah. Like, I just yeah. listen I just choose one song like Tony Anderson or something. I just have it on repeat for like six hours. Okay. That's like cool. that keeps me keeps me level. Yeah. I think uh <laughs> one like undiscovered hack that no one talks about is listening to the same song over and oh, over yeah. again when you work. I've been doing that a <laughs> lot recently. Um a little bit like drives you a little bit crazy sometimes <laughs> but like for focus it's, oh yeah it's dope yeah yeah, yeah. It, I've, I've heard lots of other guys say the same thing yeah just even some some it's really interesting some people really like like heavy heavy techno or something when mm. they're working and then um yeah much more like just like cinematic piano or something have you gotten into binaural beats at all like a uh, brain fm have you heard of that no i i don't that's where it's like uh, the the, the sound like, is changing the panning it's right different on each side yeah, yeah but it's like science like supposed to help you focus basically okay. yeah yeah well i, I had a, a bike accident like three years ago okay so i'm deaf in my left ear okay so i, so I that's not gonna work for yeah you. it's yeah. kind of it sucks it definitely negatively yeah. affects the musical listening experience unfortunately but i kind of i got used to it at this point but yeah so I, anything like panned like where something's panned to left or right yeah, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's very quiet. In my yeah. left ear. Like a motorbike accident? Or? No, it was a bike accident. A bicycle. Bike. Okay. I was riding without a helmet in uh, King's Cross in London. Oh, shit. That's and legal in the UK to ride without a yeah, helmet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's no rules there. I think they wanted to make rules, but they didn't. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I, I, it's a, yeah, I mean, this, this was kind of the start of my health journey as well. Mm. This was like four years ago, five years ago. And then... Um, yeah, I was just cycling to work and then I basically, I don't know what happened. I never saw the, the CCTV footage no. and I just flew off my bike, did like a front flip, broke my back Fuck. and hit my head and, okay. and became deaf. <laughs> Damn, so proper. And then long road to recovery. Oh, that was, that was, that was fucked up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had like brain surgery and everything. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I had a extradural hematoma, I think it's called. Or, I don't know what that is. It's yeah. It's like a bleeding under the skull where they have to take a piece of the skull out like a jigsaw puzzle. And then... uh yeah, they cut through the nerve in my hearing. Yeah. So, and then I just lost my hearing. Eight By accident? or I think that's a, a necessary part, part of the yeah. operation. So, yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah. But it was like, move. It was like yeah. the best thing that ever happened to me. Because that, that, like, that was like the turning point of business. And also that, that, that was like the health, the start of the health journey, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from when I was working in sales at the time. And um, so I was making like two and a half thousand pounds after tax. Yep. Two to three, two and a half to three thousand pounds after tax, and then I quit. I, I hit my head, but I had such a good stature in the company that they continued to pay me. They they had to pay you for like three months, and then they they kept going after the three months, and that was like the first flavor I ever had of like making money online mm. without working. <laughs> yeah, right. So no I, that was like. So then I'm I'm like chilling at home. Like I'm I, after three months, I was like pretty. I was in a pretty good place in terms of recovery. I wasn't 100, percent but I was I was getting there, and. uh I'm like, I'm making money 
online. I'm being paid, right? Without like, without working. Without working. I was like, this is nice, bro. Like, <laughs> how do I get more of this? Yeah, how do I make money? Or like, not even, not just without working, but like from home, mm. without going to this office. That I guess that was the main thing, you know? Obviously, like, I was still doing some stuff, but like, yeah, I'm being paid while working full-time at home. And the company was very against work from home before. So like, I never really had that flavor before. Yeah. And that was really where I got thinking like, holy shit, like, this is good stuff, you know? Like, I don't want to go to that office. I don't want to live in the in London, in the center of London anymore. And that was, yeah, where I started to play around. I started to do drop shipping, stuff like that. Yeah, nice. How old are you? 25. 25, okay. How long were you doing sales for and how did that impact now? Because I mean, I, like, I don't come from a sales background, but running a business yeah. sales is the most important thing ever, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, how do you how do you find that? that yes, helped? I mean, yeah, sales like it's kind of like the day game. The combination of sales and day game is like <laughs> the best thing for self development. That's why I yeah. tell any gu- young guy who's like ask me for advice, I'm gonna say fighting sales and day game. Yeah, key. Yeah, <laughs> it's saying, like you want to accelerate progress through those things. Yeah. Um. Sure. So yeah, the sale. This, I did sales for three years in this company, two and a half years, and uh, but one year of that I was basically out with my accident. So yeah. So yeah, I did that for a couple of years. And that was like what were you selling? It was a software develop software software testing services and a SaaS product. Interesting. B two B, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's yeah that w- that was a definitely a good experience, and I would encourage everyone to do sales for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially like when you're doing just the SDR role, sales development representative, like cold calling, uh, and like software engineering leaders. Like that's tough shit. You know, they're nerdy people, and they uh, they don't like to answer the phone. So. Yeah, that's, that's pretty like fun. Quite a hustle. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, so you're on Twitter. Is that what you were kind of saying earlier? Are you big into Twitter and like growing your Twitter account and stuff like that? Or are you more on the Instagram side or what's... No, so yeah, I started to grow Twitter a bit more recently. But honestly, like I have my my whole business is all about my Instagram. And I, okay. I do like a weekly Q&A on my Instagram. And that is where people become interested in what I'm doing. And they seek help from the Q&A that I do. Yeah. So my yeah, let's say the funnel or whatever is, <laughs> it, it's, it's yeah, all through yeah, Instagram. Yeah. But it, it it wasn't even like planned. Yeah. It's just how it came, and that's kind of a lot of my a lot of people like, oh, do you are you deliberately like wearing an AP and drinking mm. like farm milk and stuff? It's like it's just what I do, bro. So it's the same with my Instagram. It was yeah. like it was never planned. It just organically happened that my Instagram was the thing, the tool that I liked the most with the pictures. I like taking mm. lots of pictures and stuff. And so, yeah, I just, uh, I do this weekly Q&A and then from there, that's where people become interested in what I'm doing. But the Twitter, what I'm saying with the Twitter is, um, so I've, stu- I've I've been using Twitter like a year or something, but tweeting like once every few days. Sometimes mm. I go through a period where I'll tweet like a couple times a day. So it, it does gradually grow. Like I track the metrics, it's growing like 50 followers a week or something like that. Okay. Not a lot, right? In some weeks, oh. if I have a tweet that gets like 200 likes, then I'll get more followers like just now actually. So... And then I started to live, I started to hang out with like this guy called, you know, Zarek on Twitter? No. Okay, yeah, me, he's a friend of mine and uh, a few other guys that are very big on Twitter in the money Twitter space. Yeah. And there I saw like, they were like, bro, you got to get way more on Twitter because they're yeah. like, this is, it's the best networking tool. And I started to see like these guys, they're not in any of these masterminds that I'm in, but they have a great network mm. just from Twitter. So when I saw that, I was like, well, fuck, I should probably be more on Twitter. So yeah, I've, I've been somewhat doing it a bit more on Twitter, but. I don't know. I just I feel like Instagram is my platform. Like I just love photos and videos and sharing results. It's it just happens more organically with the stories on Instagram stuff. So yeah, I I, I want to use Twitter more, but it's it's just I don't need it to get to my revenue goal. For example, I have a great network. I don't need it from the network. So it's kind of a it's a lower priority project to do Twitter. Yeah, for sure. I'm in like the exact same boat. Like everyone's been telling me to do Twitter for yeah. years now and I'm only finally getting into it. Okay. Um, so all your clients pretty much come organic, right? Like through, 100% through organic. Organically, market. that's been how I grew my entire business. So I started to do paid ads in December. So like yeah. five weeks ago and the results were ve- the quality of the people inquiring in terms well, essentially just, well, you have the level of interest plus the revenue of the of the the income of the person weren't really there in the paid mm. ads, so we I paused the ads, and then we're gonna revisit that, that next month. Yeah, it's really. But I see now. I, I met a guy here in the inner circle. I don't want to say his name in case mm. he doesn't want to know. I want people to know. But I think he would be fine, but I won't say it anyway. Uh, he's doing one point five million dollars a month. One hundred percent paid ads. Yeah. So yeah. he's got like a sixty percent margin, and I'm like. And he, he and he explained exactly what he does. He has eight employees, 
He's doing 1.5 million a month. Seven of those employees are commission only sales reps. And I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, dude. Very lean operation. Once once you crack the paid traffic stuff, That's you can I'm... just scale super aggressively. And I think especially that the reason why I ask, especially someone like you, like eating raw eggs, uh -huh. drink, it would be so easy to at least get that initial hook or attention, which yeah. is usually most people's challenges. Like yeah. how, how do I separate myself? How do I actually stop someone from scrolling when I'm going through the Facebook feed or mm -hmm. when they're going through the Facebook feed? Yeah. And you've got that, you know, <laughs> with that whole look that you've already yeah, sort yeah. of been building. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think you should definitely. Yeah, do it. yeah, that's that's yeah. literally when you when you said crack the code, that's literally what I was saying. Like someone said, what, "What's your plans?" Like I need to crack the code with that. Yeah. Once yeah. I crack the code, it's gonna rail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What? Um, how how much does someone have to be earning in their business, or like, for them to qualify working with you? Like, how are you qualifying people? Well, in the, in my main program, not like the extensive one on one service yeah. that I do, because that's obviously for people making substantial amounts of money. Uh. Yeah, I wouldn't say they need to be. I mean, they need to probably realistically be making at least like three thousand a month. Okay. Because I have. Can you share how much you charge for that, or you keep that until yeah, they, until that, they inquire? That yeah, depends, yeah. you know. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I have a fixed price. It yeah. Not that it depends, but yeah, it's better people inquire. Yeah. yeah okay. The, the people can be thrown off by a price tag when mm. they actually can afford it more than yeah. they think, especially with kind of payment plans stuff like that. So yeah, yeah I it, it's better for people. Well, people disqualify themselves based on the price that you throw out before you've even had an opportunity yeah. to talk to them and show the value. Because they, that's they don't like. realize that they can actually afford it and that how they can, when they invest in their health, they're going to be able to have a lot more energy, which is going to help them make more money. Yeah. So that's a very yeah. common situation that people, or a common uh, outcome that happens when people start to improve their health. I had one guy, he was like making 3000 a month. Yeah. And he's like, I'm now making 17 thousand a month and it's like this was really key in that so yeah. when people improve their health of course the energy improves i i mean i'm even a case study right i was making obviously it's a, it's a bit of a long-winded approach but mm. like yeah i was making two and a half thousand pounds a month in sales two and a half to three thousand and now yeah it's, yeah it's a lot more you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so absolutely. uh and that and, and people like a lot of it is the energy and uh, yeah. stuff like that. So the the only reason I ask how much you charge is to try and get an understanding of kind of like the qualif qualification criteria for people to come and work with you. Because I mean, if someone only needs to make three grand a month, then you can find those people on Facebook for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure. It's it's. So when you say low quality, like what what kind of interactions were you having with prospects was, or leads that were coming through? We were, we were talking. Yeah, uh, you know a lot about ads, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like that's, that's cool. That's, that's cool. why I'm asking. Yeah, like yeah, a hardcore yeah. Ad I guy, think. Yeah. I, I work with an ads agency because I just wanted to maximize my chances of success. So I was like, mm -hmm. these guys are very experienced. I'm new to ads. I've got yeah. a lot happening. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to pay an agency yeah. a small percentage of the cut from any sales through the ads. So yeah, we did it with the agency. They're a great agency. So I'll, I'll continue to work with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were testing like um, on like targeting entrepreneurial types and that wasn't working. Okay. So I think we, what we want to try is like more of a mass audience type of offer rather than targeting coaching for entrepreneurs, maybe just coaching for uh, yeah non-entrepreneurs, for, for, for men basically. I don't know. We'll, we'll see exactly. Mm. But yeah, what when we targeted the entrepreneurial interests and stuff, it seemed like it's just a lot of brokies. A lot of brokies. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, what was your hook and messaging and like kind of promised outcome? It was... Uh, we tested like double testosterone in 90 days, stuff like that. We could have done a more aggressive offer. Like yeah. I don't want to do money back guarantees because it's bullshit. You know, yeah, it's like, it's, I don't want to encourage, I don't want people work. dealing with that stuff. Like people need to understand. And it, it, it's kind of like, this is the thing with paid ads. This is what I found. Like when I, this is why I kind of resisted the ads. I'm like, you somewhat have to sell your soul a bit to do ads or you have to propagate crap to mm. sell the ads, you yeah. know? And like, do you want to do that? I'm kind of on the fence of like, do I want to propagate crap with like, if you don't double your testosterone in 90 days, you'll get your money back. I'm like, that's just a crap thing to even, that's a crap mindset to propagate, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to propagate that. So it's, it's I, as I, and I'm even willing to make less money in order to not propagate that degree of like shit in the, in the world, you know? Because you got to ask yourself what kind of world you want to live in, you know? And if the money's more important than a shit world, then I don't know. For me, it's not. So it's a, it's striking a balance between a genuine offer which is not propagating shit in the world <laughs> yeah that makes that prints money so yeah that's the uh, that's the balance that i'm trying to trying to nail if you know what i mean yeah i think <laughs> a lot of the time people that, like if you're buying into a money back guarantee you've got a safety net and you don't have to do the stuff that, right because then you can just back out and get your money yeah, back. yeah right? um, wrong mindset from the beginning yeah yeah exactly like yeah. if that's what you're banking on um but i mean you should be able to do it without a, without a money yeah, background, yeah. particularly because you're getting people on the phone as well. So uh -huh. so long as they know you're legit and seeing all the results and stuff, 
I think the main question you would have to ask is like, what kind of person is interested in increasing their testosterone and why? Because the testosterone is not the, de- like <clears throat> the yeah. increase in testosterone is not the desired outcome. It's what the testosterone right. is going to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then that's what you have to sell. Yeah, yeah. it's always girls. <laughs> no, I know, right? <laughs> Every it's always time. Go- with the testosterone because people relate it to like the physical. So mm. it's, it's very often the case with the cold traffic, especially. And, th- and I, uh, there's another reason why it wasn't doing so well in cold traffic and come back to yeah. But yeah, it's, it's always it's often the case that it's like you ex- you ask on the phone. So what are you looking for? More testosterone. What do you want from the testosterone, girls? Or they say I want a better body. Why do you want that, girls? girls. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's a common uh, situation. So then we were because there's a lot of things that I improve in people. Like it's like testosterone might not even be the the top thing. Like I, in term, in terms of the results it provides, it's definitely like the industry leading. But like it's not necessarily the main thing that I help people with. Like help a lot of guys with digestion problems, mm. help a lot of guys with allergies, stuff like this. So like the scope of how many, what ads I could run is very big, like even hair loss and stuff like that. So, and that that generated a lot of interest in the organic stuff. So like, yeah, there's a lot of different ads that I could, a lot of different angles that I could go. And so we tried the testosterone first mm. and uh, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not sure about it. It also implies if you say, I'm going to increase your testosterone that people have to do blood tests that just delays everything. And people think, well, I need to, I better go get my, it creates an object, an objection that they might not even click on the ad for. Like, well, I don't even know what my starting level is. Especially if you start to throw, like, you want to be specific when you say, we're going to increase your testosterone from X to Y. It's like, well, I don't even know what the number is. I better go do a blood test that takes five weeks to get the result back. And it's like, you don't want that. You don't want that yeah, objection. Yeah. So that was one problem with the testosterone thing. Uh, so yeah, we're going to test digestion ads because I have a 100% success rate with improving someone's digestion, 100%. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, like it is guaranteed that if you work with me like and you have a bad digestion problem, a digestive problem, it's gonna improve, 100% chance. So in that sense, just on that standpoint, it's like, well, that's pretty cool. So uh, maybe if, if I can crack, the, and there's also like a big trend of like, maybe you heard like the gut health and mm. gut mind connection, all that kind of semantic stuff. It's uh, a competitive space, dude. Yeah, like any, but yeah. yeah, it's true, but the pain is big, bro. The yeah. pain is huge. Like you get have a guy, he's like, I've been I've had IBS for twenty years, never found a solution. Like I'm going to the toilet like eight times a day, sometimes for like thirty to sixty minutes. It's like you can't live life like that. That's yeah. no way to live. So like the pain is enormous. Yeah. So yeah. and allergies and what was the other one you said that was kind of weird? Uh, ha- hair loss? And yeah, allergies and hair loss. What's that all about? Well, what happened when when you start to address your health at a core at the like fundamental level? then these things start to disappear, which kind of makes you question, well, where are they coming from? It's almost like they're products of the environment that we're in. And when you start to reduce the toxicity in the environment, suddenly Mm. these issues start to disappear. Hair loss is a bit different. You need to do some specific protocols for that. I don't want to say exactly what that's kind of Mm. part of my source. But uh, yeah, the hair loss thing is, it can be definitely prevented and slowed and hair can regrow. I've had that many Mm. times. And that's been like a big... uh, Whenever I do like a, a CTA on my Instagram about hair loss, that gets a lot of interest. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. like because it's a bit. It's a, it's a. That's a big pain. Like it's a big, a big insecurity, insecurity yeah. bro. Like, and it's everyone from like twenty one. People start to get this, or even some guys younger. Like, yeah. they start to get hair loss, and like f- you can see it, you know, and it's there in your pictures, and your someone takes a picture from the side, and you see like this bull patch. Like, I understand, you know. Like, yeah. I, I would also be like. I would probably get a hair transplant if I was uh, if it was to a certain if I was them and I didn't know that you can do stuff naturally basically. Yeah. So your your hair loss stuff is your protocol's natural. It's not like uh, everything I do is 100% natural. There is zero uh synthetic supplementation involved. Um more plates more dates talks a lot about uh minoxidil. That that's not natural, right? That is very far from natural. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got it, how healthy does that guy look to you guys? I mean, no, fuck no. Like, he looks terrible to me, and he doesn't. He, he what? Well, you know, not in a disrespectful way. He doesn't look particularly healthy. He's very pale. He's got kind of weird, he's energy, like a puffy face. Weird energy going on. Yeah. Obviously, I think he did like synthetics before. So oh, they, a lot, yeah. right? So maybe that's kind of got some long-lasting effects. But you gotta you gotta look at the person. You know, it's a huge it's a huge thing of like if someone's trying to tell you health coaching or anything health related. It's like well, how are they physically? How's their energy? And like, do you want to, do you want to be like that guy? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> not not for me. Yeah, yeah. And allergies that, also just goes back to toxins and yeah. That's the that's a big part of the environment. And uh, yeah, there's certain foods which 
fix the allergy itself as well. But yeah, it's also remo largely about removing stuff from the environment. Yeah. Okay. And like I can give one away, right? Like like I said about the lactose intolerance, like you can fix lactose, not just like you can, not just that you can drink milk, but you can reverse lactose intolerance. So when you do drink the the regular milk or eat some regular cheese, you won't have symptoms just by drinking raw milk. Yeah. That's like there is like I've had that experience with a lot of guys, and that is well documented online. Yeah. But then you go on the FDA website, and it says, no, there is no science to prove this. But it's like. It's but been it's just done like every 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 person. time every yeah. time yeah. It's, it's That's why the other thing the studies well who's fun st studies are expensive like it's also one of my ambitions for having the farm. I would like to do like a research center and even at some point funding lab research to see just to see basically like what is really happening with this stuff or not what is happening but like yeah to kind of get the studies to prove it more where there's where in the areas that there is a lack of studies because. Uh, yeah, stuff happens when you start to do this stuff, and it's pretty powerful. But there's there's a it's very expensive to do studies. Like I I met the founder of Do Not Age dot com. Okay, and that's like a, a very they're like I don't know. I, he told me how much they're worth. I don't want to say yeah. big money, like huge tens of millions, and um, they they spend like hundreds of thousands to research a single supplement. Like hunt like that's not available to the average Joe, you know, or to do a specific study. So like, if we wanted to do a study of like. Even stuff like uh, there's not that many studies on like the differences between there are, there are a handful of what happens when you eat like burned food and it's mm. carcinogenic and stuff. There's not like tons of studies. And so it'd be cool to do studies on that. Even like, yeah, just even just like on the raw stuff versus the cooked and like more studies on this because there's not that many. And it's like, it'd be cool to see a lot more studies there. Cancer is a big topic of uh, yeah. conspiracy, I guess. Yeah. Um, do you... Do you have any particular opinions or viewpoints on that when it comes cancer? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, of course. Yeah. Well, if you if you actually, the, the, it's kind of perceived in society, deliberately or not, it doesn't matter. It's perceived in like, how do you see cancer? Like, because you're yeah. I don't know where you're at with the research or yeah, your understanding of it. I'm a pretty like normy perspective That's fine. on cancer. I think is like, you uh, know, what comes ra to mind? radiation. Um, like your cell phone, all that sort of stuff, will give you cancer. Smoking, uh, okay. doing bad shit, but, basically. But, but more like, and and that it's like, what is cancer? What do you think it is? And it's okay if you don't know, because I, 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 I didn't don't know. know. So I'll just get, I'll just spit out like what, yeah, what yeah, comes what to comes mind to when mind. you ask that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is like a growth, like some kind of growth that okay. shouldn't be there, like tumors or yep. um, cells that start like over replicating. Or, right. Yeah. But all, all all it actually is is the body's inability to discard old and decaying and dead cells and so that's when you get the tumor it is obviously cells but okay. it's it's just it's just like dead and decaying cells and so all you need to do is to do things which promote the dis the dissolving and discarding and obviously things that don't destroy cells that's Bacteria it or well what well, well what eats cell and this is even well this is on like bbc news they have studies where e coli the the bacteria strain is eating at cancerous cells and no one's Sam talking about this. No, like, it's it's in BBC. Yeah. I, I have all the articles because obviously yeah. I looked into it. Then they have like salmonella also. They use it to eat at certain cancerous cells, stuff like that, which yeah. is obviously much more in line, the viewpoint that I take of like, it works. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, you'd have to look into more why it's not being used, uh, stuff like that. But Do you think that it's a big pharma thing that uh, cancer is like, it's... I've heard a lot in kind of like that conspiracy conversation that cancer is curable, but they're choosing not to cure it or to like keep, yeah, well, it, a secret, keep it a secret. Kind people of say that I, I don't think it's nece even necessarily deliberate and there's an evil guy doing that. I don't, I don't think that. I think people, they, they base everything that they know on the books and mm -hmm. what they learn. And uh, that's that. So it's not that anyone is malicious. I don't even think that they're malicious in any way. I think it's just that they're, they're basing their understanding on the foundations of their beliefs are, in, are are of a certain viewpoint, and then everything that they believe after that is based on these foundations, which I don't see working too well for society. And so I kind of take different foundations, and I see how that goes. Yeah. That that kind of what you touched on is sort of what I think Andrew Tate actually means when he talks about the Matrix. Is like most normies or brokies kind of yeah. listen to him talking to about that content and about that stuff. 
and think, okay, that means there's a bunch of super powerful people in a room pulling strings and that's what the matrix mm-hmm. is. But it's more so a sense of like a global consciousness based on misinformation that's yeah. kind of been bred into um, and has turned into like this this external force now that's pushing everything or it's like an inertia that continues to push everything in yeah. a certain direction right it's, it, i don't think it's i don't think it's malicious and i don't think uh those people are evil like the main figureheads let's say i don't think they're they're evil and i don't think they have bad intent in the slightest i no. think uh they're just they're just guided in a certain way and you could say misguided or they're just guided in, in a certain direction and mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I I just take another look at it and I do something else and it works very well for me and people that seem to apply the other approach that I take seem to enjoy life a lot and yeah. they feel great, you know, and they don't feel so. Uh, you, I don't know a, a common theme when you look at someone like Elon Musk or some of the other like figureheads in the agenda and whatever. They um, <laughs> <Bill> Gates. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, they they kind of they look a bit stressed and sad to me and like. They don't look too happy, you know. You don't look at those guys and you think, I want to be that guy. Or you just gonna see Elon, he's like very anxious about the world and the direction of travel that we're going in and we must go to the moon and must uh yeah, we have to leave Earth and all that kind of stuff. And uh yeah, it's not necessarily a kind of meta that I wanna be part of myself or or I, I like doing the opposite of that and seeing how that goes and yeah, it seems to be working well. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh back on the like funding studies and all of that you i assume you know who alex becker is yeah yeah becker was talking about because he was a massive quit caffeine advocate uh, uh-huh. and that's about the time that i quit also um and i think he ended up getting back on the wagon um and now slams caffeine again as well, I he am. just sold his company for 130 million yeah, so yeah like what do you maybe do, it bro? works yeah yeah <laughs> that's it but um he was talking about the fact that a lot of the studies um on caffeine and because you know there's this whole sort of line of thinking with caffeine is like if you have a bit of coffee every day it's good for you and like right whatever um i'm not sure how in particular it's good for you but it's, yeah. it's like the same as like drinking a glass of wine well, and it's good for you but specifically those things are just based on the studies where they'll take one element of uh like the nicotine or whatever they'll take one tiny element and they'll say hey look this element like when they say red wine is good for you because it contains mm. trans revestrol it's like so overly simplistic but yeah yeah exactly and um he was saying that a lot of these um companies that are funding the caffeine studies are owned by massive caffeine companies right right so it's like not not it's the studies aren't directly done by pepsi and coca-cola and, yeah 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 you know, the coffee that would be too obvious and Red Bull and whatnot. <laughs> yeah yeah but it's it's companies that are receiving significant funding from these caffeine companies to run the studies on caffeine and then yeah. report back that caffeine is good yeah, so it's like um, the system is fucked. People yeah. like money, you know, and people uh, will do anything for yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it. Seems to be, it seems to that's the case a lot of it with anything to do with health and what we consume and stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. like how the uh, recommended food pyramid can be like what it is. You think like you know where they have like the that's the mess. meat at the top at like a, a fraction of the diet, and it's like, but why does everyone start to feel so good when they go the other way? Yeah, and like pasta and bread yeah, yeah, is yeah, like yeah. what you should be eating the most of. Like, yeah, where, yeah. where did that even come from? Well, you know, it's, it's it's science, you know. It's the studies. It's, it's the same. It's, it's the, the matrix. It's, it's that. Well, it's the, it's just the the kind of, it's, it, it what it actually is is the deconditioning of humans from nature, mm. and then kind of forgetting kind of what we are and where we come from and what's around us to basically completely. Uh, being guided only by what's done in labs, essentially, and what's what what do the studies say, and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of what it comes from. So it's the deconditioning of humans from reality. Yeah, interesting. Oscar, it's been great to have yeah, you on. Do awesome. you want to plug yourself? Where can people find you? Instagram, website, Twitter. Where uh, are going? At Oscar Vore is like I'm there on all the platforms. Instagram is the best place to follow for uh, yeah the, the weekly Q and A's and stuff. So amazing, <laughs> too good, dude. Awesome, Cheers. thank you, bro. That was fun. <laughs> Nice, bro. Yeah, it was good. That was a good chat. Let me just pause this.